Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. How many, how many of you might have been praying for some prodigals? Anybody here, you, your breakthrough that you wanted to see was prodigals coming home. Because I just saw angels just running out. <laughs> Listen, last year the Lord spoke to me and he said, not only am I going to bring back the prodigals who are out in the world, prodigals out in sin. But he said, I'm also going to bring back the prodigals who have been prodigals from my presence. People that say, you know, I love Jesus, but they're just not in the house anymore. They've disconnected from the body. Come on, some of your sons and daughters are out there. They think they're smarter than you. They think they're smarter than God. God is saying, I'm going to draw in the prodigals that have been prodigals from my presence. God's going to begin to bombard them with spiritual dreams. Dreams of visitation, dreams of outpouring, dreams where God's going to encounter them. God's going to begin to arrest them in the middle of their day and draw them back into their presence. God also said he's going to bring back people that have been prodigals from his purpose. You had a dream. You had a purpose. COVID happened. Life happened. You went through a divorce. You had a death in the family. Something happened, disrupted you. And you've become prodigal from God's presence and from his purpose. Come on, there's some of you today that that's speaking to. If either of those two things are you, just lift up your hands right now. Father, I thank you, God. Lord, that there's people right here today, Father, that have been prodigals from your presence, prodigals from your purpose. Lord, even prodigals out in sin. God, when the fire of God falls, God, it burns up all that stuff. And it brings us back on track, God. And we send the word to the prodigals that are out there. We thank you, God, that you're sending angels down. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to have you just move back to your seat. I don't know how much time you want me to take. You know, prophets, we just love this stuff. I had a lady in my church when we taught her the thing about raising the hands and praying in tongues. <laughs> she called me at the end of the first week and she said, Pastor Jane, I want to tell you at the end of this week, I've lost five pounds of attitude. <laughs> Listen, at our ministry, my father-in-law, uh, Dr. Bill Hammond, Bishop Hammond, he's written a book called 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues. Did you know there were 70 reasons? How many were here when my father-in-law was here? Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, he's getting ready to turn 88 years old. He's still preaching, praying, prophesying, traveling all over the world. You know what he says? He says, I'm going to live till I die. <laughs> he says, as long as there's breath in my body, there's a purpose for me in this earth. Amen. And so, so he, he, he preaches about, so, so you know what we do? At our, at our ministry, we start the day, our staff day, with an hour of speaking in tongues. I'm not saying you have to do it, but every now and then you ought to take the challenge. And I'll tell you, um, we do it together as a staff at times. Other times we do it individually. I can tell you probably 10 years ago, one of my first days of going in and just like taking my time on the clock of a, an hour and speaking in tongues. I went to the sanctuary. I walked back and forth on the sanctuary. I walked back and forth on the platform. I walked around the building four or five times. I got down on my face. I got down on my knees. I lifted my hands and I thought, surely my hour is up. I looked at my watch and it had been seven minutes. <laughs> There's a discipline involved in praying in tongues. But I want to take just a few minutes today, if that's all right with you. I want to take just a few minutes today and just kind of unpack something I heard the Lord say to me. If you want to turn in your Bible someplace because some people don't feel like they've been to church if they don't turn in their Bible, you can go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. We are currently, obviously in the year 2022, 
but we're also in the Hebraic year. How many of you track the Hebrew year? Anybody here track the Hebrew year? We're in the Hebrew year on the Hebrew calendar, 5782. 5782. And... Let me first say that when we came into this year, last year at Rosh Hashanah in September, I was praying one night and the Lord said, I want you to look this number up, 5782 in the Strong's Concordance. How many know what a Strong's Concordance is? Where you look up Hebrew words and Greek words. And the Lord told me, go look that number up in the Hebrew. When I looked it up, it is this word, er. Say it with me, er. Sounds like a lion roaring, right? You know what it means? It means to open up the eyes so you can see. And it means to awaken. The very Hebrew year means to awaken. It is the place that we find in scripture when it says, awake, awake, O Deborah. Er, er, Deborah. Awake, awake, O arm of the Lord. Awake, awake, O mighty men. God is saying, this is the year for awakening. Awakening to the power of the Holy Spirit within you. Awakening to the gifts of God that are in you. Awakening to the spiritual warfare that's all around it. And awakening to the victory that's already been purchased for us when Jesus died on the cross. It is a time of having our eyes open. When you go on and you look up another meaning of that word, it actually means to raise up your sword. So it's not just for the purpose of seeing, it's for the purpose of seeing the mighty hand of God come down and bring breakthrough, bring victory, and bring triumph in every area of our lives. 5782. Two years ago, though, when we entered the 5780s, we looked at those last two numbers, the 80s, and it is a Hebrew word, pay, P-E-H, Pay, say pay with me, pay. So 57, 80, the 80 is pay. And pay in Hebrew, it's a very interesting word that I think you're going to love. It means mouth, voice, and sound. And I'm telling you, I go to a lot of churches. This place is amazing. This is your time. It's a time of awakening, and it's a time of the voice. It's a time of sound. It's a time of declaration. It's a time of breakthrough. It's a time of victory and taking land and and driving out the ites and possessing the land, occupying till he comes and seeing victory in every area. How many believe that's a word for you personally? And so right at the beginning of the 5780s, knowing this, I woke up one morning And I heard the Lord speak to me, and it did sound a little bit like a trumpet. So interesting. You know, Revelation chapter 1, this is the only time that that's ever happened to me like that. But Revelation chapter 1, when John was caught up into heaven, and he had this whole revelation, hence the name of the book, Revelation. Okay, he said, I heard, as it were, a trumpet speaking with me. The trumpet is that prophetic voice of God. And I woke up one morning... Not early. God does have permission to wake me up early. He's the only one that has permission to wake me up early. But I woke up and I heard the Lord say, this will be the decade of the dynamo. The decade of the dynamo. And so I wrote it down. I got up and I began to do a little digging. You know, when God speaks something, we've got to dig into it. We've got to find out what it means. We've got to find out the fullness of what he's saying. And so I looked up the word dynamo, and uh, the, the first thing that I found is that a dynamo is a description of a forceful, energetic individual. Kim Dynamo Owens, okay? <laughs> the definition goes on to say someone who is a fireball. I think this whole church is a dynamo. It's filled with dynamos. It's filled with fireballs. 